What's happening, everybody, on YouTube? Steve here with Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you guys with a quick video. In this video, I want to give you five tips to survive as an entrepreneur, right? I've been an entrepreneur starting up various businesses from eBay to Amazon to Kindle Publishing to creating my own products to affiliate marketing. I've done a lot of things over the last five years, and I've been able to survive, and not only survive, but really live a great life saving money, investing in various things. And I'm really happy with where I am today. But this isn't about me. It's more about you. And I want to give you guys five tips to be able to survive because I see so many people who they get started on eBay or Amazon or Shopify or they start up their own business. And next thing you know, you ask them, you know, three, six, nine, maybe two years down the road, how's things going? And they're back at their day job. And I know deep down inside, that's not where they want to be. So I'm going to give you guys these five tips. There's so many more tips, um, but these are five that really stand out to me. Number one, manage your projects closely. Each and every day, you want to be aware of what projects you're working on. And the goal, the goal shouldn't be to go balls to the walls every single day and make the most progress and work 15 hours a day. I mean, if that's your goal, that's your goal. But what's more important if you want to survive and you want to be around five years, eight years, 10 years down the road is to make sure that every single day, let's say you have multiple projects going on, maybe Amazon FBA, maybe you have a YouTube channel, maybe you have a Shopify store. Maybe those are your three things you're focusing on. Each and every day, you want to make sure that you're doing something to move the needle forward. That's it. Making progress. That's what it's all about. If you make a little bit of progress each and every day, three months, six months, nine months down the road, you're going to have massive amounts of results when the other person compared to you, they only worked a couple times a week or they forgot about the project or two weeks later they you know, listed and then a month went by and they listed or maybe they're really inconsistent. Being consistent every single day and just making a little bit of progress. It's not about going all Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone uh, on your projects. That's not what's really the most important if you're looking to be successful. If you're trying to be the top you know, point zero. Well, what am I trying to say? The top, the top 1%, right? Uh, in your field, then yeah, you're going to have to work extremely hard and make massive, uh, take massive action in your business. But long, long term to be successful, it's not about necessarily how much you work and how many hours you put in, but it is consistency, right? I don't want to downplay hard work, but the consistency is key. So um, manage your projects daily, have a system in line, whether it's Trello. Um, I enjoy uh, using Trello as my project management software or Google Drive. Those work really well, cloud-based systems. So everything's up there in the cloud. Nothing gets lost. You can access it from your phone to your computer, different locations. So um, manage your projects closely. Number two, second biggest tip to survive as an entrepreneur is to have multiple streams of income. Don't listen to those people. I'm telling you, do not listen to those people who are telling you, only focus on one thing. That's it. Don't have anything else. Just one thing. That's the only thing go for. Burn all the bridges behind because you want to know what? While that philosophy does stand true to a certain extent uh, in terms of if you want to build a $100 million company or you want to just like start your own eBay or have your own Google, most people just aren't going to have that much success. I feel like a more reasonable expectation is to have multiple projects and multiple businesses that you're running, whether it's a side business like YouTube, or maybe you're going full blast with Amazon FBA, whatever, but have backups, have other things that you're working on. And I don't like the word backup. I like having multiple streams of income as, as is what I'm really trying to say. Um, because you want to know what, when you're selling on eBay, you're playing in their sandbox. When you're selling on Amazon, you're playing in their sandbox. When you're running your Shopify store, you might think to yourself, yeah, I have my own website and I have all the control. But if you take a look at how you're achieving your sales, I'm going to guess it's probably like 80 to 90% Facebook ads. What happens if Facebook shuts you down, right? Um, so you always want to have multiple streams of income. The, the people that I notice who are in the game for longer periods of time versus the ones who give up after a year is they only have one thing, right? The people who give up, they have one thing and maybe they get kicked off or they fail or they can't make it work. Whereas if you have multiple things, um, you have a better chance of succeeding. So um, I'm sure we could argue all day long about should you focus on one thing or should you be a jack of all trades? I think it's a, it's a nice medium balance. I don't think you want to sway too far to either side, but that's what's allowed me to be able to survive an entrepreneur. Survive as an entrepreneur over the last five years is having multiple income streams. A lot of times I've had over eight to 10 streams going at a time and not all of them require active 
um, efforts every single day for me. A lot of them were passive. Um, but that's the beautiful thing about being an entrepreneur. You can have projects that are very active, you know, such as eBay or Amazon, and then you could build up little side projects like maybe having a YouTube channel, right? Or selling products on Gumroad or maybe building email marketing campaigns and having funnels that work behind the scenes. There's a lot of various things that you do that are active versus passive, taking time off, still making you money versus always having to put in that time and effort. So uh, multiple streams of income is definitely important. Uh, number three, and this this kind of stems from number two, is always be planting seeds, right? You, what am I trying to say? I notice a lot of people, they don't typically try to start planting a new seed until, what do I try to say? Until the uh, business or whatever they're focusing on or their specific little section of the garden is like dying, right? And then they start thinking about planting seeds. That's not what you want to do. You want to start planting seeds when things are going well, because it's it's hard to predict when shit's going to hit the fan. Let's just be real. When, you know, maybe you're doing $500,000 a year on uh, Amazon FBA as a uh, retail arbitrage seller, and you're going to Targets and Walmarts and Barnes and Nobles, but then all of a sudden you get that inauthentic claim uh, that comes in, knocks you out, and it takes you, you know, a month to get uh, reinstated again. That can happen. So don't wait until that happens until you start planting the eBay seed, planting the Shopify seed, you know, planting the YouTube seed. And, you know, there's so many things that you can do. It's insane. Maybe buy a piece of real estate and have some passive income coming in that way. But plant seeds when things are going well. You don't have to spend 10, 15 hours a week to nurture a seed. You can, you can spend an hour a week to get a little side business going and be consistent with that. And then four or five months down the road, you have a little passive income coming in from that. Um, so always be planting seeds. Number four, don't listen to the haters. I'm telling you right now, the haters, all they want to do is bring you down. It's like it's like a bucket of crabs, right? One crab tries to climb out of the bucket and, and do something new, do something unique, do something that the others aren't doing. And what do you know? The crabs, they pull the other crab down. Do not let the crabs take you down. Don't let other people sway what you believe in and what you want to accomplish and what you're excited about and what you enjoy. When you, when you go to bed at nighttime, you're the only one there. The haters, you want to know what? They're worried about other things. So don't worry about the haters. Don't pay them any attention. Now, if you're getting you know common feedback all the time and you notice a pattern, you always want to listen and you want to take things in um, and, and, and take necessary action when possible. But don't let the people out there who don't believe in their dreams take you away from the dreams that you want to accomplish. Do not listen to the haters. Number five. Leverage other people. You know, after four or five years uh, going on my sixth year as uh, an entrepreneur and running multiple businesses and trying out a lot of things and getting my feet wet with a lot of different um, ways to make money, I realized that I've ha I have my strengths. I have things that I'm really good at. I'm, I'm great at creating a vision. I'm great at uh, staying consistent with something that I'm passionate about. Uh, I'm great at uh, having that 30,000 foot overview on a project and being creative. And I'm excellent at creating content and motivation. But there's also a lot of weaknesses that I have. You know, web development, I'm not the greatest at that. Graphic design, uh, I'm not the greatest at that. Back end administration uh, type of tasks from, you know, daily check ins to emails and customer support. I just don't enjoy it. It's not high leverage. I'm just not that good at it. So I've learned as an entrepreneur that I have to focus on my strengths and I have to outsource my weaknesses, right? And to go a step further, certain things in your business are going to make you the most money and create the biggest change and help the most people. And then other things aren't like, you know, customer service type of stuff and graphic design work. You can easily outsource that and hire people who are much better and more talented than you. So when you start to develop as an entrepreneur and you start to build up your various uh, income streams and you start making money and you know things are clicking, don't think that you have to be the one to do everything. That's the biggest mistake. You want to focus on what you're good at because when you get locked in the business and you're stuck and you're spinning around and things are going so fast and every day you have more and more and more tasks as you're building and growing your businesses, you're going to get pulled away from what really matters. You want to know what matters the most? It's thinking. It's learning. It's problem solving. It's being strategic. It's reflecting upon what's working and what's not working. It's relationship building. It's networking. It's um, you know taking courses and online trainings and you know even more important things are like having fun, you know, enjoying yourself and getting healthy. I mean, you do not want to get so locked in your business that 
you're not focusing on what really matters the most. So learn to uh, leverage other people to outsource. I use websites like Upwork.com, Fiverr.com. I also uh, use a service. I just use them called Virtual Staff Finder. And um, it's it's a great way to, it's kind of like a headhunting company. And it saves you a lot of time from having to interview and, um, you know, talk to a bunch of people to find the right person. So those are a couple of resources there. But um, yeah, those are five tips to survive as an entrepreneur. These are tried and tested things that I've been doing. This is how I've, I've been able to survive. And I haven't been perfect. And, you know, uh, some people catch on quicker than others. But I've certainly been learning a lot and developing and growing. And I uh, just want to share these five tips with you guys. So uh, if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys have any tips of your own that I missed out on, because I'm sure I missed a few, please leave a comment down below. Actually, just let me know. What's your number one tip to survive in, as an entrepreneur? What's the one thing that you do? you know, or the one motto or the one principle that you believe is very, very important for surviving. So drop that down below, but like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for all the love. And I look forward to talking to you all soon. See you later. Bye.